Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Erwa Chen and I'm a second year podiatry student at TU's SPM. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my GPA, my MCAT, and the extracurriculars that I've done. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because it's, it's been suggested to me by Geo, but also because I want people who's out there who has low MCAT, low GPA, and wondering what the heck are they going to do with their lives, maybe they can consider podiatry. Because from the very beginning, I always thought MD or DO was the way to go. But I only found out during my senior year that podiatry was an option for me. So if you're in the same position and you have similar activities, similar grades, maybe consider podiatry. It's a very good career. Let's get started with my extracurriculars and then we'll move on to my grades and so on. All right, so I have my resume right here and we're gonna go through them chronologically. The first thing that I did was way back in high school actually, like during my sophomore year, I was going to this animal shelter um, place called Street Tales. It has a lot of uh, dogs, so I pretty much just walked them and let them do whatever they have to do. The second thing I did was the summer of my freshman year. A couple months before the summer, I was talking to my friends and they're like, oh, I got this um, you know, research position at this place. They have, they have their own like plans and stuff. I was like, well, I don't have any. Well, maybe I should get some. You know, I wasn't sure who to ask, but I knew that there was this cancer research center like near my school. Emailed a bunch of professors and a couple of them got back to me. I think one of them expressed interest in actually having me. So I just like said, yeah, let me go in for an interview. And I did get the position, but it wasn't paid. But at the time I didn't care because it was still experience, right? All right. The third thing that I have on my resume is during the winter of my sophomore year, I was volunteering uh, at this hospital in the child life department. They give me a list of patients to see and I'll just go room to room. I'll either give them what they need if they don't want to be bothered, or I will actually like interact with them and like, you know, play video games, play board games, draw arts and crafts with them. All right. The fourth thing I did was the summer after my sophomore year, I was working at a pharmacy. This was like a family owned pharmacy. So their restrictions were, it was limited. Most pharmacies, they require you to be certified, but this pharmacy, I didn't need to like get certified. So I was quickly working in there for um, the entire summer. I, I think I was only working during the weekends because that's the only time I was available. No, he was, he, he had spots for me during the weekends. That's why I just dispense medicine for patients. I get patients, doctor's notes. I'll give it to the pharmacist or I can do it myself on the computer and then I'll get approved and I'll start, you know, cl uh, counting drugs and, you know, dispensing them to the patients. The fifth thing I did was during the fall of my junior year, what I did was there is this program called Minimed, Drexel Minimed, where at the time, um, Drexel medical students were hosting this, you know, se these seminars. And, you know, if anyone's interested, you can go. We're talking about their lives as medical students, you know, getting us acquainted with how the life is like. And also they hosted this uh, suturing seminar where they taught us how to suture. Now, the sixth thing I did during the winter of my junior year, I was accepted to externship program they had at Temple. It's a professional development class. I told them that, you know, I wanted to become a ER physician. So they paired me up with an ER physician for the entire week at Temple Hospital. There, I was able to shadow maybe six hours a day and got to, see, got to see some very interesting cases. Now, the seventh thing on my resume was actually getting accepted to uh, Temple Med's research, summer research program for like, you know, the un underrepresented kids. I was paired up with a PI. We talked about what topic I could do and then working on it for the next eight weeks before I had to present it in front of other PIs and other students in my program. Just to, just to show them that, hey, you know, within these eight programs, I actually learned something where I actually have something to showcase. And I, so that's it. That's, that's all I have on my resume. 
So let's move on to my grades year by year. And lastly, I'll talk about my MCAT. Welcome to my screen. Now you guys can see uh, exactly what grades I got in my uh, freshman year. So a little bit about my school. We were only allowed to take three science courses per semester. And it was probably a really good idea because of how bad my scores are. You know, I, I thought that coming in, I was going to, you know, be a very strong performer and whatnot, but just the whole transition from high school to college was really difficult for me. I guess that could explain why I did so bad. So I had a little bit of time to reflect and refocus during the summer. And so here are my sophomore grades. All right. So this is spring, uh, fall semester, spring semester. So I was doing considerably better seeing that there's no C's. Right, there's a couple C's in each semester, but here I was averaging like a B plus. And then here um, I did even better in my spring semester. Now this W for genetics was a withdrawal because I was experiencing some health issues. And I feel like had I continue, I would not have done good in the, in the subject. I think from a strategic viewpoint, this was the best idea to get a withdrawal so that once I fully recover, I can perform a lot better. All right, entering my junior year. Here, as you can see, I was taking three science courses. That was like kind of a maximum for me already. This was just something I can do to, um, you know, keep an eye on my health and everything. And here I, I was doing really well. And actually, I got an A minus in genetics. I was actually ranked 20 out of like 200 kids. So I was really doing really good. Something about the professors that were teaching this course, I really enjoy and I got to learn so much from this course. And I was, so this was the externship that I was talking about. It was, uh, it, it took place during winter break. The seven days that I got to shadow the ER physician, it was through this program. And yeah, I mean, that's it. These are the grades that I actually used to apply for medical school. All right, it's time for my MCAT score. So I actually got 497 on my MCAT. At the time I took it, it was less than 50%. I would say 48% at best, overall ranking, uh, overall percentage, 48%. You know how devastated I was to get that score? I, I, I really thought I was going to get at least like 50 or 60%. But I think the reality was that I didn't study for it enough. So honestly, I talked to so many professional health counselors and they've all been like, oh, you should, you should do like a master program so you can, you know, have a better resume or improve your chances of making it to medical school. And I hated that idea that I had to go back to school and like, prove myself. The one pet peeve I have in life is trying to prove myself to other people because I know that I'm a compassionate person. I know that I want to help people. And I know that this is the way I want to help people and not, not like a firefighter or like a policeman. I don't want to help people like that. I want to help, help people with medicine. During a lot of research, I was able to find podiatry and I was also looking for optometry, pharmacy, and I figure that those, those professions, they're getting way too saturated, way too fast. And the, the, the exam that I had to take was another uh, sort of like MCAT for, for those schools. I saw for, the, for podiatry, I can actually use my MCAT and everything that I've already prepared for, for my MDDO schools, I can just change the, the name or whatever to podiatry and I can just submit them. And, and you know like have it sent out like that and that's what i did i applied i i would say uh october of 2017 the transcript actually got approved around december and i re uh, interviewed around december and i think a couple of days after i actually got the email saying that i got accepted so that was that was really good because my birthday was right around December. So that was like a birthday gift, I guess. So yeah, that is my story. I hope you guys could relate. And 
you know, if somehow this video gets a lot of views or something, and somehow Podiatry gets a lot harder to get into, everyone blame Geo. Geo was the one that suggested this video. So, all right. Thank you guys. If you guys have any video suggestions, you can comment down below and you can comment, like, subscribe. I would appreciate it. And thank you very much. See you guys next time. Oh yeah, so just something that I forgot to mention. Podiatry school, although there's only nine of them, it's actually pretty easy to get into. The demand isn't there. So there were people who applied a week before the orientation and they got in. So, you know, if the demand is not there, but you maybe have a low MCAT, like 490 to 500 would be good of a chance to get in. So as long as you have that, um, I highly suggest you guys to look into this career, shadow some podiatrists, um, you know, just email them. It's not that difficult. They're going to let you do it and, you know, see if this career is right for you. And I hope you guys, you know, I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, continue watching my channel. If you guys want to see more of what it's like to be a commuter, uh, you know, going to a podiatry school. All right. Peace. Professional development, development. <laughs> and I saw that. <laughs>